this point, is that there's a number we go by to define hypothyroidism. And if you don't meet that number, you're not going to be treated. But we find that 80% of people that have a mediocre thyroid, still considered normal, but not quite in the diagnosis, over the course of a decade actually do become hypothyroidism. So in reading this book, it empowers people to take their own action and say, hey, listen, I have all these symptoms. I have that thyroid number that's kind of in the middle. Let me see. Let me be treated for this, and let me see if it improves the quality of my life. And, you know, 99% of the time, it, it does. It helps. So I'm, I'm a proponent of treat now. Don't wait. It actually becomes a disease state, and, and there's a point of no return on that because you lose too much of your life. Yeah, and also you said be prepared for the menstrual cycle. Be prepared, yes. A yeah. lot of women, and that's a big chapter. That could be a book in itself. But um, the menstrual cycle, assuming you're still menstruating, PMS cripples a lot of women. So I mentioned tons of herbs that can be taken, exercises that can be done, um, foods that can be eaten to kind of lessen that PMS. Mm -hmm. I also talk about pre-menopause, um, there are things to be done before you actually go into menopause. Progesterone is actually the first hormone that goes down, and yam converts into progesterone. So over-the-counter taking progesterone, or seeking out your physician, or once again, other herbs, and if, if you do not like to be on hormone replacement therapy. But progesterone is not cancerogenic like an estrogen may be. You talk about your really research into medicines of the Indians, India, Indians, China. Uh, what do you bring from those into your practice? Um, I bring well, first of all, the herbs, which are which are too fulminant to talk about just in here, mm -hmm. but but also the way in which people live their life. I mean, when um, a lot of my research is done in Africa where in many, many tribes, probably over 200 tribes that I've interviewed, they don't know what the word fatigue is. They wake up in the morning, they do their chores. It's, it's, a, it's a cycle for them. It's a program for them. They do not have the ability to divert into doing something else. And, and that's why, again, in my book, it's so important to have a schedule, to wake up in the morning, to eat the right food, to prepare for lunch or for dinner. I find that um, people sometimes have the wrong meals at nighttime. They they've, haven't had the time to go shopping. They grab the first thing. They're tired. They're unprepared. And in these other cultures, if you're unprepared, you die. I mean, there, there's no, it's that black and white. Yeah. And yet we are more fortunate that we have the ability to, to digress from, from a static quo here. But um, the, also the, the other big thing I find in other cultures in their medical field. So they can go to the hospital and, and they'll be treated with medicine. But once they exit the hospital, they have their, their witch doctor, per se, or, or their Ayurvedic physician, or their Chinese herbalist. And it, it is it becomes a family dynamic. So it's not just what happens to you illness inside the hospital. It's how you're going to react with the rest of the family, you know, eating as a family, um, mm -hmm. loving as yeah. a family. So you, you have a great section here on people who run to get organic food. Run to get organic food, yeah. yes. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. There's certain foods that it... Bananas. We don't need to eat organic bananas. Um, I wish everybody could eat organically, but it's expensive. And so we have to learn where it's really necessary and where it's not. And that's why, you know, the bananas are a big thing. In general, meats should be organic. Um, fruits, if they've got a shell around them, a wrapper around them per se, an orange doesn't need to be organic. But anything that you're picking straight up that can be contaminated by bad soils, by heavy metals, by pesticides should be organic. Omega-3 and omega-6, what do they do for us? Um, omegas help 
not only lower cholesterol and be great for the heart and great for your brain, but we also need them for metabolism. Uh, I do a, a, a test which is an intracellular vitamin analysis. And it gives us the past year's worth of vitamins, minerals, amino acids, carbohydrate metabolizers, antioxidants. Um, and I find that people who are very strict in their diet and really do try to stay away from the fats and eat the organics, and they're the ones that are losing the omegas because of the same reason, they stay away from the fats. And those are the people that also have a higher, harder time with losing weight and, and, and keeping their energy up because they don't have that, that metabolic power to digest the rest of the food. Dr. Coyla, what is dysbiosis? Dysbiosis. I have to say it was a word I had not okay. read or heard. So one thing that keeps our intestines healthy is a balance of the right ratios of bacteria. Whether or not we'd like to believe it, but we have hosts that live in us and they help us with uh, eliminating our, our stool, essentially, or creating it as well. And when that integrity of that ratio becomes altered, that's when we can get constipation or diarrhea or bloat or weight gain. Um, and we get that from antibiotics. We get that from essentially an alteration of our pH in our body. Isn't that when you're supposed to have yogurt? Exactly. Well, no. you're supposed to have yogurt every day. And there's lots of people who are lactose intolerant or simply don't like the taste no. of low yogurt because they don't do, do well with milk. So you can get probiotics or acidophilus. It is a different type of a yeast that helps restore the proper balance of those organisms in our gut. Um, and then again, what's the proper balance, what isn't? You can go to any stores and, and get a product. And they're not controlled products. So here's the other advice I give to anybody who is going to do it. Don't go on the cheap. Get good quality products. It makes a difference if you're buying something for $5 or if you're buying something for $25. Invest in yourself get a good, good product. And now we come to pains and how to get rid of back aches. Acupuncture? I love acupuncture. Yeah. I love acupuncture. Um, again, Chinese medicine is one of our oldest medicines. And it, acupuncture works by stimulating channels in the body. So positive charges, negative charges. It's easy. It's simple. There's no side effects to it. Um, it's not addictive as other forms of, of pain medicines are. So, you, but again, it's one of those things where you can't go just once and say, it didn't work. You really have to sit there and, and go over and over to yeah. see if it's something that's good for you. And there's so many different forms of acupuncture. Yeah. There's electrical acupuncture, and there's actually the, the type that they put the needles into. So. How do you keep your gallbladder healthy? How do you keep from having gallstones? Well, it's hormonal balance because we have, we have the, the saying in medical school, fat female 40. So you have to keep your weight down, your hormones balanced because, again, estrogen, if it becomes sludgy, can create gallstones. Um, and you have to stay away, or actually not so much stay away from fatty foods, but have a balanced diet with lots of fiber, lots of vegetables, lots of grains. Yeah. Now, I have to tell our friends that on page 71, there is a fabulous list of questions to ask yourself and answer. Toxicity and inflammation questionnaire, general signs and symptoms, and that too is vital. The other one, and that goes on for three pages, is a source of chronic stress. Those are two really important parts of this book that will sort of answer who you are to you. Absolutely. And I could go on because we're, we're out of time, but I have to say there's another half of this book I'd love to talk to you about oh, another thank you. time, Doctor. Meanwhile, will you autograph oh, my book? I'd love book? to. And all of us will be a little healthier from what we have been talking about. Meanwhile, support your local library. Go in, take out a card. That's how they get funding. Libraries are our finest 
really democratic institution in America. There are wonderful books that even go back to Nathan Pritikin and what he was talking about for people being overweight. Because if you follow some of the advice here, you're going to lose weight. You're going to lose weight because you're going to feel better. It's healthier. And uh, there goes that fatigue solution. You need it. So read the book. Get those eight steps along the way. Take a child with you. Get them their first library card. They will not forget you. Where did you have your first library card? New York City Public Library. Yeah. <laughs> and I still have one. And I go probably every two weeks. Yeah. With I even took my book to India, and I, I renewed it online because really? I was there for a month, so right? What so were you doing there? I was doing research. My book is actually, I, my book, as I mentioned, is, is sold around the world, and I have a yeah. publisher in India. But I went there to study some Ayurvedic medicine um, and also to, to be with the Buddhists. Yeah. <laughs> with the Buddhists. Well, in, in Bhutan. I was in yeah. Bhutan first, and then I, I got down into India. But when I travel, I do travel to learn more, to empower people, to bring back knowledge to the United States. So meditation is also important. Meditation is important. It's in my book. Yoga is important. Um, yeah. And there's different types. There's slow and there's fast. And if you can't do that, I just recommend dancing. Oh. I love people who go out and just dance, and even if it's in your closet, but there's no reason. We didn't hit on the exercise chapter. No. So there's something for everyone. And, and the thing that I find after people have read this book and then come into my yeah. practice, everyone who's read it has been able to find themselves in it. The, yeah. the, the statement I always get is, you were writing about me, and, and, and I love that. And we hope we'll leave you today in better health. Thank you so much, My doctor. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.